Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and uh, good evening. Welcome back. Let's continue the part two of session one. The first presenter is Dr. Sirad Prasad Duka. Dr. Sirad is working as a senior research scientist in the Department of Surgery, Hamid Medical Corporation, Quata. He has more than 15 years of uh, more than 50, 15 years of research experience in computer version and immense processing. He has several research grants of multi-million US dollars, patent application, peer-reviewed journal and conference papers. He holds a PhD from Indian Institute of Technology, Kuwahati in medical image processing. He also holds an MBA degree in finance and is a certified PMP. His speech title is Towards Developing a Lightweight Neural Network for Liver City Segmentation. Uh, let's welcome Dr. Sirada. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me here. Um, so today I'll be uh, presenting my work. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so let me start with the presentation. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Could you uh, turn on your camera? Uh, sorry, I think I don't think I'm in the right environment for turning on the camera. I apologize for that. Uh, okay. So, um, so today I'll be presenting our work, which is titled as. Uh, towards developing a lightweight neural network for liver city segmentation. So let's start by understanding what city images are and what kind of role uh, they play in uh, medic medic medical domain, especially in radiology. So uh, the city images, also known as computed tomography, is a non-invasive way to obtain high-resolution 3D images of cross-sections of human body. So mainly the most applied use case of CT imaging is in the visceral region, which is also known as the abdominal region, to capture how these abdominal organs are of the human body. And they can be used for diagnosis of diseases, or they can be used for analysis of the shapes of the organs. And if there are any diseases, diseases found in these organs, uh, treatments can be planned based on these images. So why do we have to perform uh, segmentation, specifically the liver segmentation? Because this is because the anal analysis of the abdominal organs is necessary for detecting any liver diseases. Um, for example, liver cancer, also known as hepatocellular carcinoma. Conventionally, uh, what the radiologists do uh, is that they manually delineate every slice of the CT scan uh, as per the region of interest. In this case, which is liver, they and multiple radiologists have to do this procedure just to avoid any kind of biases and they aggregate the, uh, their findings together in a meeting. So what is the challenge with this conventional approach? It is very time consuming. Uh, so it delays the treatment procedure and it is very subjective. So one way to overcome this is to automate it by using uh, data inductive algorithms such as uh, deep learning based neural networks and machine learning and to make it automatic. So we have to, we can create an automatic city segmentation for region of interest, which in our case is the liver. So what are the current challenges with the existing approaches in the literature um, regarding liver city segmentation? So one of the thing is that um, the intensity distribution of the liver in the city images overlaps with the other organs uh, like pancreas, kidneys that surround the liver. So we cannot use simple intensity-based methods to segment the liver as com when, when compared to the other organs. Furthermore, the axial resolution of the, the, the CT image, that is the, that is the distance between the slices of the CT scan, which is also known as voxel spacing, varies depending upon what kind of machine is being used and what setting we are using. Furthermore, the number of slices also uh, depend upon the setting. 
The tumor within the liver, they have different shapes, sizes, and volumes, and their intensity also varies depending upon the stage of the tumor. Finally, the if if during the uh, during the CT scan, if iodine uh, based uh, compound is injected in the human body for enhancing the contrast, this might also lead to some form of a noise in form of X-ray attenuations. So the limitation of existing work in the literature. So what happens uh, in, currently? The most popular architecture in the literature for these kind of segmentation models is. Uh, encoder decoder architecture which decreases the spatial uh, dimension of the image as the image goes to the encoder and it exponentially increases the parameter count by doubling the feature width at every stage by doubling the feature width at every stage this leads to an exponential increase in the parameter count which in turn results in high memory consumption and disk space utilization so because of this, there are two major drawbacks. There are, it takes a lot of uh, time to train the network because it contains a large number of parameters. Furthermore, because they, they, to train these parameters effectively, we need a lot of data, which requires the meaning that for generalizability of these models, the large data sets are needed. So we propose this architecture, which is known as res pack unit. It's, it, ha, it, it, is, it has a residual backbone, which is a residual encoder and decoder. And it has the pyramid at rest convolution module, also known as PAC, on the skip connections. So I would like to uh, draw your attention to the uh, to the backbone, which is highlighted in the orange. And it, you can see that the feature width throughout the encoder as well as the decoder is 32. So one might say that by maintaining by by tuning the feature width to just 32 and decreasing the spatial size might lead to loss of information. But we are compensating that by having skip connections and the pack module over the skip connections. So the pack module over the skip connection uses uh, dilated convolutions of several uh, of, of several different sizes, varying from six all the way to 18, and also global average pooling. So what it does is it allows the pack module to uh, extract multi-scale features of the encoder input while being uh, while being computationally efficient and this these uh, multi-scale in uh, feature maps that are generated are passed to the decoder at every stage we do not do this at the the very topmost stage this is because the the dimension the spatial dimension of the input is very high and this will result in a very computationally expensive pack module at that stage so we avoid it at the at the top stage so I would like to share some implementation details with you. So we train the network with the uh, uh, CT, CT scans that are part of the liver task in the medical segmentation decathlon data set. And since these uh, the CT scans had varying ax axial dimensions, uh, we rescaled it to 256 by 256 by 64, 64 slices and the height and width of the image is 256. The scans were always kept hot in RAM for easy fetching uh, during training and inference. Uh, to implement the network, we use Keras in TensorFlow 1.15. Uh, to avoid overfitting, we use vertical flip and transpose uh, as augmentation measures. And to optimize the network, we use the Atom optimizer with uh, learning rate of 10 power minus one, uh, 10, 10 power minus four. To evaluate the uh, our segmentation model, we uh, use two kinds of metrics. One is the region based, which measure the area overlap of the predicted segmentation mask. With the ground truth. Uh, these are the dice coefficient in IOU. And we also use the class-based class -based accuracy metrics, which is sensitivity for the uh, predicted segmentation mask and specificity for the background. So first study that we conducted is based on the loss function, is to, to understand what kind of loss function maximizes the performance of the networks uh, trained for segmentation tasks, specifically the liver city segmentation task. And we first tried two different uh, class accuracy-based loss function, which is the focal loss and the binary cross entropy. We both we found that among these uh, class-based loss function, uh, we we found that binary cross entropy resulted in uh, better performance. But uh, the 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 model the loss function we have proposed is the modified surface loss, and it performs the best. This is because it combines the area-based loss functions in the form of dice loss and the boundary-based loss function, which is the boundary loss. 
So the area-based function tries to ensure that the model learns the area distribution of the uh, ground truth, where the boundary loss tries to fine tune the boundary of the segmentation mask and captures the dis discrepancy between the boundary of the, uh, the predicted segmentation mask and the ground truth. So the second, this second slide uh, has two plots. Uh, I would like to draw your attention first to the left plot, uh, which compares the different loss functions. And we can see that uh, over different uh, epochs, uh, we, I have, I have uh, plotted the dice coefficient on the test set and the modified surface loss generalizes the quickest. Uh, in less than 10 epochs, uh, it reaches nearly 90% dice coefficient on the test set. On the right hand side, the, the, the plot on the right hand side compares the different networks in the study. And here we can again see that the REST32 pack unit, which is the main proposed model of this uh, um, of this uh, of this paper, it, it generalizes the fastest, followed by the REST32 unit, which is same as REST32 pack unit, but without the pack module on the skip connections. And we have the other models for baseline comparison, which is the tuned unit and the unit. Finally, we also conducted a qualitative analysis study uh, in which we wanted to compare the performance of several networks with our network. And we found that the REST32 pack unit resulted in the most accurate um, segmentation masks uh, while being the lightest model uh, and most, comp uh, la most computationally light model among, among the compared models. So to conclude, uh, we propose a residual pack unit architecture that provides accurate labor segmentation while having minimal weights because of the tuned backbone and uh, efficient uh, pyramid at risk convolution module. Furthermore, we suggest a modified surface loss function, which combines the dice loss as well as the boundary loss for maximum segmentation accuracy. And finally, we do a qualitative analysis to robustly evaluate whether the, the proposed model gives the desired results. Thank you so much. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, uh, thanks, Dr. Sarada. Uh, if there is no question, we will continue to the next speech. Uh, 